What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Field Vision. I'm your host, Brian Clinton, contributor over OUinsider.com. We're breaking down some of the most exciting newcomers for Oklahoma in 2024 as part of the 2024 freshman class that's coming in. And the first guy we're talking about is Eddie Pierre Louis, the offensive lineman out of Florida. And we're looking at one of the most impressive physical specimens that Oklahoma's got on their entire roster. That includes guys like P.J. Adwari. That includes guys like Kenny Stutzman. That includes guys like Deion Burks. I think that Eddie Pierre-Louis, pound for pound, might be one of the best athletes that Oklahoma has on their roster. And it doesn't take long watching film to see that. But we're not even going to start with film. We're actually going to start with some of the things that we see from him uh, on the track and uh, when he's lifting weights. Uh, just incredible athlete. I mean, this is a guy that is moving at uh, an incredible speed for uh, being listed at 6'3", 325 pounds. Um, he is running alongside uh, an athlete that is probably a third his size, uh, yet he's moving uh, at about the same rate of speed. And if it doesn't look natural, it's because it's not. <laughs> There's no way uh, that that I'm a guy that's going to step in front of him if he's on the football field coming at me uh, to set up a block. Uh, maybe that's my mentality. Maybe that's an issue in my mind. But I just don't know that there are very many guys willing to get in front of a load like that. The momentum there uh, is terrifying. I mean, <laughs> what do you do uh, if you're a defender trying to get in his way? Uh, and the other thing is the strength. Uh, when you watch uh, this clip here, this is back whenever uh, EPL was a sophomore. So this would have been uh, going into his junior year. And we see him uh, pump out 25 reps at 225. This would have landed him inside the top 30 of all NFL players at the NFL draft. Uh, at the NFL draft uh, in his in this year uh, with him as a sophomore. And he'd have been right outside the top 15 for offensive linemen uh, in, in the 225 rep uh, bench max for, for what they're doing uh, over in, in Indianapolis to assess some of the players coming into the NFL. So like the, the athleticism is there. The strength is there. Uh, what does it look like on, on the football field? Well, uh, it's impressive. It's impressive. There are uh, pretty much his his entire uh, highlight reel here is is just pancake block after pancake block. Whenever he's on offense, whenever he's uh, playing defense, uh, you see some of the the aggressive the aggressive uh, mentality and the tenacity come out. He's got. Plenty of aggression. That's one of the first things that jumps off the off the page, or jump off jumps off the film at you. Um, there's not a lot of guys out there that have the uh, the ability to move the way that he does, but also uh, load and and block the way that he does with power. Um, and so there are. I, I took some notes here for for him as we kind of look at some of these plays uh, uh, for a second time. So uh, he's listed at 6'3", 320 pounds. He's got an 80-inch wingspan, uh, so he's got great length for an interior offensive lineman. Um, and and with the strength, the 25 reps on 225 that you just saw, uh, he's got incredible upper body strength, and that's only going to get better. Uh, his build is only going to get better. His body composition is only going to get better uh, as he is is uh brought in and, and starts getting to work this summer with with uh Jerry Schmidt and and the offensive or in, in the Oklahoma uh training staff. And so um as he becomes more flexible at the hips uh and, and in his knees and and uh w- which is just something you need to see for most offensive linemen uh coming out of high school. I think that there's a chance this guy becomes an absolute monster uh, for, for Oklahoma at guard over the next couple of years. Um, so the, the speed and agility, uh, he is a member of the four by one team, uh, at Tampa Catholic in his senior year, uh, which you just got to see a, a uh, you just got to see a glimpse of that, uh, as he's moving down the track. And so the authority that he moves with, 
and the presence that he brings as a puller in the running game is it's it's otherworldly. I mean, there's just not very many guys at his uh, size that move the way that he does, and uh, you see that uh, really translate well in some of these uh, plays here um, on, on on film. And, and as you look at some of the the stuff that he does as a defender, you see some of that. You see some of that uh, athleticism come out. You see some of the uh, violence come out. And then you know on plays like this where he's blocking. Uh, blocking field goals, and then you get to see an opportunity uh, for him to get out in the open field and block. It, it's it's a uh, th- there's a full, and of course this is a highlight film, right? So uh, this is all the best stuff. Um, so you're going to see the best from everybody on their highlight film. But this is a a guy that has all of the athletic traits, all of the uh, things that you want in an offensive lineman. Um, from a physical perspective, to be dominant at the college level. Add to that the mentality that he shows, uh, the tenacity and the violence that he brings as a blocker. Um, he has the attitude that you want, uh, particularly for an offensive lineman that's working under Coach Biedenboe. If if you have the, the right mentality, if you, if you are going into every snap wanting to inflict pain, uh, and impose your will on a defensive lineman across from you, uh, you're going to be successful. Even in a, a league where you're going to be tasked with facing some of the best athletes in the world now. Uh, in, in, S- in the SEC, some of the defensive linemen that you're going to face on the interior, uh, they're pound for pound the best athletes out there. And uh, when you have somebody like Pierre-Louis who exhibits the elite strength and the ability um, to move the way that he does, that that obviously gives him tremendous upside uh, in being to able to to combat guys like that um, in SEC play. So, uh, from a technical side of things, some of the notes that I wrote down, he he does he's got some things that he's going to have to work through this summer on the technical side of his game. He can improve a little bit of his footwork. Um, he he is he's been so used to to being able to overpower guys uh, in high school that I think some of that um, some of that is probably going to you know, limit him at the beginning whenever it comes to working against some of the more uh, experienced defensive linemen that he'll come up against. Um, they are very good at, at using offensive linemen's leverage points against them, uh, very good at uh, using strength against them, uh, push pull moves and things of that nature. So he will have to find a way uh, to improve his base and where he's working from. But as soon as he understands that and he's mastered that, which Bill Biedenboe is a technical wizard <laughs> when it comes to offensive line work. So I have no doubt that that's going to happen for him. Once he figures that out, I don't think there's anything that's going to be able to keep this guy off the field. Um, there's just not a lot out there uh that you could say he doesn't exhibit he has he has the speed he has the strength uh he has the mindset and he has the opportunity oklahoma needs help on the offensive line and and you don't ever want to be in a position where you have to start freshmen uh and and i'm not suggesting that he's going to be a starter uh for the sooners right away but I I do think the opportunity is there for for him to at least have some sort of say in what the rotation looks like, because this is an elite athlete coming in uh, from the high school ranks. There was just one offensive lineman ranked higher than him uh, in the 2024 class on rivals. And uh, quite frankly, I, I don't know that I've seen a better athlete along the offensive line come to Oklahoma since uh, since Creed Humphrey. Uh, this is a guy that has all the tools and some of the things that he does have really reminded me of, of one player in particular, uh, that we've seen at Oklahoma in, in the last several years. And that is, uh, Cody Ford. We saw, uh, Cody Ford be a dominant blocker for Oklahoma uh, during his time in Norman, and you see some of the very same uh, 
principles that that we saw in uh, EPL throughout his uh, highlight reel there. You see it exhibited again here uh, with Ford. You see the tenacity. You see him uh, putting guys on the ground uh, more often than not. He's finishing blocks, uh, sometimes longer than is necessary. Uh, he's really imposing himself and uh, the the strength, the brute strength that he's able to remove people from their feet um, and and really uh, dominate some of the guys that he's going up against the quickness. It, it, it just there there are some eerie uh, there's almost an eerie level of similarities between them. Uh, but that's that's the that's the uh, ingredients that it takes to to be the guy that you need to be uh, for Bill Beadbo and for for this offensive line. And it works because Ford is doing that uh, for the Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bills now, and is somebody that has been impressive uh, during his time in the NFL, uh, but obviously made a huge impact for Oklahoma during his time. Uh, you know, keeping guys like Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield clean. So. Um, there's, there's a lot to, to like here. Really think that, uh, EPL has an opportunity to play, uh, some, some football early on in his career. I think he's going to be someone that you need to keep an eye on this year. And especially as we start to progress towards, uh, fall camp and, and things start to really gear up, uh, in the month of July and, and August. It's going to be really fun to see what we start hearing about uh, the interior offensive line because you've got Branson Hickman that's come in and looks like somebody that should really help there in the middle. Uh, Fabechi Wiwu is going to be a guy that's going to make all kinds of impact at, at the offensive guard spot, but the other offensive guard spot is is relatively open right now. And I think that with several players looking to take that opportunity to run with it, a guy of of Eddie Pierre Louis stature and what he brings to the table is certainly going to be somebody that I'd be watching for to make some sort of move there. Obviously, if Oklahoma isn't starting a guy like EPL right off the bat, that means they've got better op- options, and and that would be just absolutely great news for Oklahoma if if Eddie Pierre Louis is able to take some time and and develop. But again. I just don't know how long you're going to be able to keep an athlete like that off the field, especially at a position of need for Oklahoma going into the SEC. So really like this guy. I think Oklahoma has a gem here in EPL. And before long, you're going to start hearing this name talked about whenever it comes to offensive line in Oklahoma. And you will know pretty much what you need to know about him now with with what we've covered here in this video. So and that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you guys so much for checking the video out. If you're not subscribed over at OU Insider, what are you doing? You've got to get over there and check out uh, what we've got going on. You've got Brandon and Parker covering recruiting better than anybody. Uh, Brody is doing the best job of anyone out there uh, covering OU basketball. Uh, Jesse and myself, we're covering softball. We've got all kinds of stuff coming up for that and then obviously fall camp and sec media days and the 2024 season is coming up for oklahoma football and we've got all of that covered over on ouinsider.com so if you're not subscribed there for less than 10 bucks a month you can get all of that and they're going to just continue to pump out content as we start to turn towards the 2025 and 2026 classes and really focus on those Brandon and Parker do an awesome job on the recruiting trail. So make sure you're you're checked in over there and, and uh, taking full advantage of that. Also, make sure you're subscribed here at the OU Insider YouTube channel. We're going to have more stuff, not just with this series, but with, with several other podcasts. And we've got lots of stuff coming down the pike for you guys. You're going to want to tune in next week. We're talking about another offensive player that's going to make a difference for Oklahoma. And his position coach, who is not quick to hand out praise is speaking pretty highly uh, of him already. And so we'll take a deep dive into another newcomer next week, and you're going to want to tune in for that one. But until then, we'll catch you next time.